Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Box and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at a very handy little gadget which some of you may have been dreaming of for a long time. I know I personally have, and this is going to be a great device if you've got more than one computer, or maybe a computer and a console, but you're limited on space or limited on funds, and you don't want to spend all that extra money on a separate monitor, separate keyboard, separate mouse, separate storage, maybe a separate Wi Fi adapter, all those kinds of things. Now, with this, Basically, it means you can save a ton of cash. Now, this at the moment actually retails for somewhere in the region of about £40 here in the UK. This is the Ugreen CM664, otherwise known as the USB 3.0 KVM switch. I'll put links for this in the video description if you're finding it hard to find. And actually, you may find as well that there'll be a discount code. Now, there was actually a £10 discount on this when I actually bought it, so even better, save a little bit more money. Obviously, depending on when you're watching this video and uh, where you are in the world, then that may or may not be in effect. So what is a KVM switch? Well, a KVM is basically a shortened version of keyboard, video, and mouse. So that is your three main kind of forms of input and output on your computer. Obviously keyboard and mouse for controlling your cursor and for typing, that kind of stuff. And obviously your monitor is your visual response or your display. So this actually can replicate a keyboard, video, and mouse, which is basically what it says. So you can plug in two PCs to the little switch box and have full control over your, basically, what is you're doing on your PC. So if you're browsing the internet, editing a video, playing a game, whatever it is, then it's absolutely fine. Now where this thing actually gets very cool is the fact that it supports higher resolutions. So this now supports 4K60 and is fully compliant with HDMI 2.0. So you can also run it with 1440p at like 165 hertz if you want to, or even 1080p up to 240 hertz. Now clearly your monitor and also your cabling and your graphics cards and all that kind of stuff are going to have to be compatible with that, but if they are, this shouldn't be a problem. Another very cool feature of this is the fact that it has USB 3.0. So we're looking at 5 gigabit per second transfer, not only on the three USB Type-A ports, but also on the USB Type-C, which is one of those things we don't traditionally see on more budget KVM switches. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look and see what this is all about. So as you can see from the front here, this is Ugreen, and it basically says what it does on the front there. HDMI, KVM switch, two in one, also 4K60 supported. If we flip around to the back of the box, it gives you a list of the specifications and a kind of very basic idea of what you can plug into the KVM to actually make it useful for you. Next, let's take a look and see what we actually get included in the packaging. So first of all, you get the actual KVM switch itself, which is uh, very nice. Aluminium as well, so nice sturdy construction and also some rubberized feet. We'll take a closer look at that shortly. When it comes to cabling, they actually include pretty much all the cables you'll need straight out of the box. There is one which is missing, but you may or may not need that depending on your configuration, but we'll go through that shortly. So included in the box, we have HDMI cables, two of these, 1.8 meters in length each, and these are HDMI 2.0 supported, so high quality cables. You will find if you're using a KVM switch, then you really wanna use the best quality cables you can, or ideally the ones that come inside the box. You may possibly find that if you use basically cheaper cables, then you may not get the actual desired frequencies on your monitor. You may be limited to like 1080p at 60 hertz, that kind of thing. So yeah, make sure you use some good cables. Next up is the actual connectivity. So in terms of actually getting the USB signal from your computer to the KVM switch is by these USB 3 cables. So these are A to B cables and you'll notice they've got a slightly different end on them, which if you've used a USB printer, that sort of thing before, this is a slightly upgraded version. So these are higher bandwidth, up to five gigabit per second, and there's two of those included in the box. Something else as well, if you do want to actually move this maybe in a different position or have your PC somewhat further away, you can buy these very easily on places like Amazon, eBay, etc. and you can get them up to about five meters in length. So if you wanna have a PC the other side of the room, then potentially you can do using different cables, but they do include two 1.8 meter ones actually in the box. The last of the cables included is our little switcher. So this is a Ugreen switcher, so you can actually hide this somewhere discreet on your desktop or nearby. So you can use the button, just press it, there's a little audible click to it, and that is basically a toggle switch. So this will toggle between the two inputs on the KVM switch. So as a default, it will start on port number one, press the button, and it'll switch to port number two. So maybe if you've got your PC on one, Xbox on two, when you boot up for the first time, PC is gonna be on, press the button, and it'll switch to your Xbox output or input. This is connected by a mini USB, so it doesn't get confused with all the other ports on there. 
This has a length of like two meters on it, so you can hide this out of the way. So if you don't want all your cables and stuff on show, you can hide this somewhere discreetly, maybe underneath your desk, and run the cable to the top. So next, let's take a look at the actual KVM itself. So as I said, aluminium design, so very nice, decent construction. On the bottom, you've got some rubberized feet, so if you are putting it on your desktop next to you or nearby, then it's not gonna slip around on your desktop. There's also a button on the top, which replicates what this one does. You can have both connected at the same time if you want to, so have your switch somewhere and also have access to this and just press it and that will switch between the two PCs or the Xbox and the PC or whatever it is you decide to actually connect up to your KVM switch. In the top corner, something which I would have liked to have seen a little bit better or possibly on the front is some illumination. So this will switch between one and two, depending on what device is connected or which is selected. So let's take a look now at the actual ports. So on the front facing ports, we've got on the far side, our mini USB, again, for connecting our little toggle switch. Next up, we've got a USB type C, so that's five gigabit per second. And next up, we've got three USB type A's, all of which five gigabit per second. Now don't worry if you've got slower devices or you just need a USB 2, you can use them. They are backwards compatible, but this is where a lot of KVMs fall over. They rely on older USB technology and USB 2.0 doesn't have the data transfer that you would need and potentially even the actual electrical current available. So if you're powering certain devices, they may not work as intended. With USB 3.0, you're gonna get that full five gigabit per second. So taking a look on the back. So this is our kind of input and output. So on the far side, there is a USB type C. Now this is purely for providing additional power. So if maybe you're connecting other things to this which require extra power, maybe a USB hub or some sort of hard drive enclosure, which requires a little bit more juice than your PC can give, you can use extra power on there should you wish to, up to three amps on the five volts. So that can be potentially useful. You don't necessarily need to use it because it will draw power from your PC ports anyway. But if for some reason your PC and your other device which is connected on ports one or two isn't turned on, this device won't be getting power. So you won't be able to switch it prior to the PC being turned on. Then this will grab power. If you just want to use this for possibly just HDMI switching without using the USB function, you will need to have that USB-C power. The USB type C cable, unfortunately, is not included nor is a power brick, which would have been a nice thing. But again, not everybody's gonna need it, so it's adding unnecessary cost to the package. So back to the devices on the back. So HDMI, so that is your HDMI output. So that is the one you're gonna to connect to your primary monitor to. Then you've got a USB-B, which again, using the USB cables, which we showed earlier. So plug one end into there and one USB cable into your PC, your Macintosh, your Xbox, whatever it is you wanna use it with and that's gonna carry through all the ports that are needed. So if you've got multiple devices plugged in, it's gonna pass all that data through in one single cable. And basically next to that, we've got replication of that. So there's the HDMI going from your device, HDMI from the other device, USB to the other device. It's kind of straightforward if you think about it. The only output on here on the back is the HDMI on the far side. It's all labeled up as well, so you can't go too far wrong. So going back to the front ports and actually something which some of you may not have considered. So if you are maybe a video editor and you've got a Macintosh and also you've got a regular PC or an Xbox or another device, this is actually gonna be quite useful because if you've got a Mac, they have very limited storage supplies or space. So you can actually plug in additional storage to this or even one of those USB type C hubs, that sort of thing, plug it into USB, then that's gonna give you all the extra ports such as your card readers, your expansion SSDs, M.2s, all that kind of stuff and you can then switch between two devices. So if you wanna use it on your Mac, maybe put a camera card file in there, then you're thinking actually I could do with doing something on my PC with that. Press the button, you switch through, and all the devices that are connected on the USB are gonna be transferred. So if you've got a, a nice headset, which you like using, but you don't wanna buy two of them, because obviously why would you? This actually doubles up your components. So if you've got a nice keyboard and mouse again, and you wanna use it for PC and also an Xbox, whatever it might be, this is gonna be a fantastic way of doing it. Now I've actually bought this because I am in a very similar situation, whereas I've got limited space, as some of you already know, but I do actually have a new Mac mini and also I've got my desktop PC and I don't have room to have two individual setups. So I'm gonna be taking advantage of using this, have my Mac mini underneath my monitor, have my PC to the side. I'm gonna use all my components, my headsets, my webcam, all that kind of stuff and basically I can switch between the two. Now, something to bear in mind as well, if you are planning on doing this, if you're maybe gonna plug in a Wi-Fi adapter, so you can share your Wi-Fi adapter across two different devices, depending which mode you're in, if you're in mode one and you're connected to a PC on mode one, when you switch over to mode two, 
then all those devices are going to transfer over. So things like downloads in the background or file transfers, if you're going to USB, those will be cut off. So it's basically like unplugging your USB and plugging it back in again. So do bear that in mind. But otherwise, I think this is actually a really fantastic little product. It's essentially quite cheap and certainly a lot cheaper than buying an additional keyboard, monitor and mouse, which you may or may not have to do. So anyway, this has been the Ugreen CM664. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then consider hitting the subscribe button, then the chime notification, that way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.